two, one. Okay, I think we're on. You might want to just double check you guys on the page and make sure that we're on. Um, good afternoon. Hello, everybody. I am excited to have you here today because we are going to talk about a really important topic in relationships. And you're in this group because obviously you know how important relationships are. Um, and this topic is something that is crucial because we talk to people all the time who reach out to us who are looking for support. They're on the verge of divorce or they're in a really toxic, painful relationship. Um, and it's all because they're not investing the right way in their marriage or their relationship. So the topic is really the failure to invest in our marriages and our, the failure to invest in our relationships, why that is and the damage that that causes. Um, essentially what this boils down to is a lot of couples just don't carve out the time, right? They don't sit down to proactively create the relationship that they want. And yet they want the relationship to be this endless base of love and support. It's like we want our relationships to nourish us and make us feel good and <clears throat> support us and give us happiness. And yet we take very little time or resources to invest in our marriages that we expect to do so much for us. Exactly. Um, we don't systematically nurture it, right? Yeah. Um, I always say on a small scale, it's like wanting a healthy plant, but then never watering it. And with a marriage, it's really the foundation of everything that matters. It's not just a nice to have. It's really the essence of the health and well-being of the rest of our lives as parents, yes. as, Absolutely. you know, career professionals, as people in the world, um, as brothers, as sisters, you know, just in life in general. That's so important. So today we're going to talk about this, the importance of investing in your relationship, the failure to do so, what that actually looks like. What is investing in your marriage? What does it mean? How does, how does that happen? How do you know you're doing it the right way? We're also going to talk about the top six or seven problems, the most common symptoms that result from having an essentially starving relationship. And then what you can do to invest in your marriage today, some things that you can do to get clear on what that will look like for you. So once again, I have my fabulous coaches, Ned and Kelly, joining us today. And Hi, everyone. <laughs> How are we doing? Kelly and Ned are going to tackle this head on. You guys know you're alongside me. We're in this together. We see this all the time. What do you think, how, do, how would you define really the problem of not investing in our marriage? Like, Why do we have this? Why is this sort of a cultural, what is the social context for this problem? Yeah, so I'll answer that. Um, the answer is that we aren't taught. We don't know how to invest in the marriage because it's not something that's taught in our culture. No. Uh, we're right. taught to invest everything like blood, sweat, tears, time, equity, focus, belief around, um, our education. You know, we're even, we're taught to go into debt for our educations, for our careers, for our continuing education, our success, um, our homes, our cars, our kids, you know, credit cards and um, Christmases and holidays. Um, we're taught to put everything into everything else except for our marriage. Yeah. Like everything else except for. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it's backwards. It's completely backwards because our marriage relationship, our intimate relationship is what affects all those other things. So right. if we don't have this happy, healthy, joy-filled, like foundational place for our lives. And when you're married, that's really your set point. That's your vibration that you're operating from. If it's down in the dumps and it's at a low vibe, everything else in your life is going to be matching that. Yeah. And um, yep. so it's really crucial that um, we get it right and we start to flip this paradigm around because really – um, as far as I've seen, the investment is like in the wedding. And then after the wedding, that's it. Totally. We've been so much people save up for their wedding, right? Yeah. They'll save up and save up and save up and they'll use credit card debt. They'll borrow money from their parents and family. And it's like this one day event, this beautiful ceremony that people have. The cultural idea is, is that's worth it but not the actual relationship itself after the wedding is over. So yeah. I would agree that it's, it is backwards. Yeah. And these things are not taught 
uh, look, they're not taught at home. At home, mm-hmm. um, the skills, the communication, the mindset—all of it's not taught at home because we're still living in a very old paradigm of what relationships look like. So our mothers and our grandmothers got married for very different reasons than we get married today. Today we mm-hmm. get married because we want a lifelong best friend, a lover, confidant. Um, we marry for love and connection and our mothers and grandmothers married for just to have some semblance of a life, quality of life. They married for, you know, um, to be taken care of. And we're basically um, expected to be, you know, taking care of the household, rearing the children, and we get married for different reasons now. So because of that reason, it requires an entirely new set of skills that our men just have not been raised to deliver. So um, there's a real problem uh, because it's not taught at home. Mm-hmm. Our parents and grandparents didn't know it. It's not taught in schools. Yeah. It's not taught in college. Mm-hmm. It's not even taught if, if you are a therapist, a psychotherapist, a psychiatrist, psychologist, family therapist. It's not even taught in there. In I know. Therapy. I remember that too. Like in college, Psych 101 you know, you're not even, you're learning the stages of childhood development and things like that, but you're not, you're not learning about emotional connection. You're not learning what the research says about the importance of that and what that looks like. You're not learning what the research shows about the best ways to communicate and what is actually the glue that holds long-term relationships together. In fact, you know, you would take an abnormal psychology class. Well, how often are you going to use that? right? How many people took abnormal psych in college? That was just like a normal thing. Why aren't we learning more about relationships when that's what everybody wants? Everybody's focused on it. Our whole culture supports that wanting that, but you're right. It used to be like getting married meant getting, having a shower, having a wedding, having a honeymoon, making sure you have enough dishes, making sure you have enough cooking, you know, things for your kitchen. Yeah. Yeah. But nobody's even like, looking at a book to say, how is this marriage going to work for the, if I really want to like, yeah. right. How are we going to make this a healthy marriage? That's just that's, not what we've inherited from our culture. Yeah. yeah. But you know, when you think about it and you think about the like traditional, you know, marriage, like registry, right? Like you go and you register mm-hmm, at the place mm-hmm. and you are, you're registering for dishes for, <laughs> Or plates and mm-hmm. things set up in your house and um that's that's what the focus was back then for the women right again so it's like there is no okay premarital course right about how to live a relational life with another human being and what all goes along with that yeah um <clears throat> like good luck yeah 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 definitely it's, it's it's just not prioritized. Yeah. Intimacy is not prioritized in our culture. It's not valued in our culture. In fact, it's quite the opposite yeah. um, in our culture. And so you, uh, the first thing I think to realize for everyone is like to realize that, wow, like we haven't been taught these skills. We don't know these skills. How can I have a healthy, happy foundation in my marriage if I've never learned these skills? I've never been taught them. How can then I practice them and then embody them? How well, are they supposed to learn it? Right, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Well, so, I, the other thing is this, though. Um, you couple that with the fact that what we have been taught, especially as men, uh, is quite the opposite. Okay, so not only are we not being taught what we need to know uh, moving forward and, and, and having a healthy relationship, you know, coming out of this 20th, 20th century man, you know, model into yeah. a 20th century model not only not do we not have the skills for that we're bringing the residue of an antiquated old system <clears throat> and a model that is playing out very fast okay in terms of okay not only do i have to learn something new i have to reprogram myself i have to get rid of some old ways of thinking that have become um become very toxic in my relationship. Absolutely. You know, yeah, and way. also same with if you have a, a history of trauma, it's the same thing. You have yeah. to you yeah. have to learn how to unprogram what you learned and reprogram yeah. that will support healthy relationships, whether it's toxic masculinity like you're talking about or whether it's a history of trauma. There's most people come into their marriages <clears throat> with some 
skills that they learned growing up that maybe served them then that no longer serve them in an adult relationship. Yeah. That they have to replace and unlearn. Yeah. I mean, I'm always on the phone with the guys who are finding themselves in this position where um, they don't know how to communicate. Um, they don't know how to open up. Um, mm-hmm. challenged to yep, be, see that all the time. They're challenged to be emotional. Okay. And I actually was on the phone with a guy today and he was, he, that was one of his biggest issues is that he's like, you know, when I answer a question, you know, my, my wife's question, I'm pretty much done with it. And she wants to keep talking. And I, mm-hmm. I said, you know, she, she wants to communicate with you. You know, she wants more than just an answer. That's time being spent. She's cherishing that. And you have mm-hmm. to, you know, cherish it also. That's a that's a skill set. And that's what he didn't know how to do. But he realized that I said it. He's like, yeah, I don't do that. You know, and that is something I do need to learn, you know. So uh, the, the men, there's, there's an awareness coming about with the men because so many are failing, you know, <laughs> as mm-hmm. men in their marriages around this. And it's not a lack of care. It's not a lack of commitment. No, no. It's a lack of skills. And at a deeper level, not really recognizing the importance of investing in those skills and exactly. learning what we need to learn to do that. Right. And I think also um, we're not taught to think of financial decisions as a reflection of our values. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that, and that, you know, I think Kelly, Kelly always talks about, you know, show me your bank statement and I can show you what, you know, where you place your values. And yeah. like she said, you know, it, the vacations and everything, everything outside of what should be the, you know, the core, creating a, a very healthy and core foundational healthy relationship, which extends, you know, beyond that and affects everything else is what you should be focused on, you know, because it does affect everything else. And, but that's not the case, you know, it's about everything else, all the material things. We see it during Christmas, everybody freaks out. They get crazy. Everybody stresses out. Um, <laughs> Kelly and I don't do that anymore. We kind of cut that out because we realized that it was it creates more stress than it does uh, comfort and joy. You know, when I yeah. when I'm just focused outside, and then the family remembers the stress of it all. They don't yeah. remember the connection and the togetherness, which exactly. is more important than the big screen TV or whatever else you're right. Exactly. Yeah. And then I have I have another really funny ish. It's not really funny, but it kind of is um, story. I was actually um, talking to a woman who was literally about to call off her wedding due to like the red flags of the communication issues and just the patterns of stuckness that she and her fiance have been in for years. And so she's literally about to call it off. Um, but she has never gotten therapy either. When I asked her, you know, one of the questions I asked, you know, what else have you tried? Have you tried therapy? And she says, no, I haven't tried therapy because I'm saving my money for my wedding. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, all that wedding money is like wasted if you don't have a great marriage. (laughs) Yeah, definitely. Really think about what are you putting first and be conscious. It's a cultural blind spot. And mindful. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, I've had the same. I've had similar situations with people too. Exactly the same. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So that is the problem. I mean, I think we, we can see that it's, um, it's a culturally inherited undervaluing of the importance of our relationships and being able to actually invest time and resources into making them amazing. Yeah. Um, And what ends up happening is, well, there's really six main issues that we want to talk about with you guys today that come up as a result of not investing in your marriage. And and, you know, if we've not if there's some things that we've talked about so far that are really resonating with you, please feel free to comment in the comments below about um, the mindset around this piece of it and the lack of prioritization of the relationship and uh, and the issues that are going to result that we're going to talk about that result from that failure to prioritize a relationship. But let's talk you guys about um, about what do we see are the top biggest um, symptoms of this failure to invest in our marriage. Well, I, I'll lead. Uh, one, of the, one of the first ones I see, uh, which is very prevalent, um, is infidelity. Um, mm-hmm. You know, unfortunately, if you know, if you do not, the relationship lacks emotional connection, 
Um, to me, that's just disconnection. And, and when people don't feel connected at home, oftentimes that leads to, you know, looking outside the home for comfort um, or things that you're not getting at home. And when you're a lot, oftentimes you're going to get what you look for uh, outside of the home when you do that. And, and so a lot of times, I, like I said, the infidelity that begins to uh, occur within the relationship is a result of just not connecting. Um, and that, for a lot of the guys, I see that it's very prevalent with the, with the men, especially mm-hmm. because they don't have they're not they're really not able to tap into uh, with their emotions themselves for the most part. You know, they they have a hard time really expressing themselves, let alone connecting with you know their their loved ones. So that's that's a really huge problem. And and this yeah. is something, you know it, it you, once you once you begin, men actually have to be taught this. OK, mm-hmm. it's, they have to be taught how to be emotional. They have to be taught how to open up. Like I said, when you're coming from a system of, you know, patriarchy and I just got to put it out there, which teaches you the opposite, which teaches you to suppress, you know, your feelings, which teaches you to, you know, man up. You lose an entire half of yourself. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and, and that that creates a void. And then we sit around and, and, you know, the men wonder why they have so many questions about you know, while they're in these places, it's like you're half a human being, you know, you're, yeah. you're, not, you're not a full person. And that's what women connect with is, the, you know, that 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 emotional side that is very important. It's just important for human connection. Mm-hmm. You know? and, yeah. Absolutely. And, Absolutely. and and I want to add this in there, too, that it's women too, women and men you know, need to be taught how to emotionally connect. Um, uh, because women cheat too. I mean, it just happens. Men and women both do it, yeah. but they do it for different reasons. Um, but one of the biggest problems too, about with not investing in your marriage and not investing in yourself, doing the work yourself, doing the inner work, um, is, you know, most, well, not most, everyone, everyone has been programmed between ages zero and seven. When we're in that subconscious theta state, you're programmed with the patterns of your parents. Um, everything you see, hear, experience, taste, smell, touch during those formative years, it programs you. And yeah. so in those programs, those toxic programs and dynamics, don't begin to show up until, you know, um, as an adult, like mid twenties, early thirties. And if you're not constantly evolving and constantly doing the inner work and you're not investing in yourself, you're not investing in your marriage, uh, then you are stuck in these patterns and these belief, um, dynamics and mindsets that are not serving you. So a lot of people are in toxic mindset but don't even realize it at a conscious level. Right. So that's a huge problem mm-hmm. um, because you're not going to be able to emotionally connect with anyone if you've not emotionally connected with yourself first. Yeah. And a lot of people have this idea that marriage equals emotional connection. Yeah. Um, that love equals emotional connection. And that's not the case. Marriage does not equal emotional connection. Love, just because you love someone doesn't mean that you're just automatically going to be able to emotionally connect with them. If you aren't emotionally connected deeply, you're prone to attracting um, outside of your home all these things that you're not getting at home because you're a magnet to it because we all want it as human beings. But if you're not getting it, if you're not doing that, then you're automatically going to be magnetizing that to yourself outside the home. Yeah. And then if you're a man or a woman who's prone to being codependent, being love addicted, being sex addicted, all those things, you're going to start to unravel um, your life down those paths of dysfunction um, yeah. because you're just completely unaware of your own patterns. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And that self-awareness is so important. And that's why this work is really, it's an inside job. And what you were saying that too, being half a person, that's so important because a lot of times people 
will say, you know, I can't change who I am. This is just who I am. I don't want to change who I am. My spouse is trying to change me. Yeah. And what I always say is this isn't about changing who you are at your essence. It's about becoming more of who you are. It's about reclaiming the the disconnected parts of you. It's about integrating the underdeveloped sides of you yeah. that are who you are, but they're just not fully developed. And so you're missing out. Exactly. And it's not to blame anybody for infidelity because you're not ever at fault if your partner steps out of the marriage and they're not communicating with you. You cannot take responsibility for their choice to do that. Okay. That's, you know, they need to do that inner work. Yeah. But the climate of the relationship, if it's an unconscious climate and there's not that emotional connection, it doesn't feel like it's a safe place and you're not recognizing it ahead of time, you end up having to recover from an affair, which is so much harder than preventing one. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it's true. We get a lot of people that are like they're recovering from unfair and it's possible. It's definitely possible. And it, you can come out the other side of that. Yeah. Um, but like you said, it, it, takes, it, it takes uh, the person, especially guys, stepping into that role and, and reclaiming that part of themselves that has been, you know, gone, suppressed, just forgot about, you know, and, and not taught about. And so that, that leads me to number two. Um, you know, the communication difficulties and, uh, that become very impossible also because mm -hmm. of this main, this main ingredient that's missing. You know, I mean, when you when, it, when you get married, you get married to share love, to share connection, to share experiences, to to have a happy experience. You want to you're there to enhance each other's happiness. If you're again, if you're coming from the place of j just. The, these um, adaptive child behaviors uh, and there's, it's a very negative, um, I, I guess, foundation for a lot of the guys because, you know, they, these, these patterns begin to show, you know, they, they don't really know they're there until they do get married oftentimes, which is, mm -hmm. that's, not, that's just not the best time to start realizing you have a lot of issues. That's why we, you know, we promote being very proactive around, um, self-development and, you know, relational development. So it's really important that you recognize this um, and, and understand that, yes, we all have stuff that we have to deal with, you know, but just uh, it, it, for the guys out there who are single, who are listening to this or see this, I'm saying actively start working on yourself right now. Get yourself prepared for mm -hmm. your relationship and your, you know, and learn how to yeah. learn be the man that you need to be. Learn what kind of man you need to be. Be aware of the times that you live in and be aware of the changes that have been taking place over the past 50 years since women mm -hmm. have stepped up their own and you have to now step up and be a different person also. It's very important. And so right. a lot of guys, they, they just don't understand that concept around um, facilitating the action around developing themselves first and foremost from the inside out so that you can be that partner you need to be for your your spouse or your partner, you know? Absolutely. And that's not something that you can just do in an hour here and there. No. It's not something you can do from just reading a book or listening to a video. It's something exactly. that you know, there has to be consistency <clears throat> and a systematic process and commitment to that. Because the communication stuff, if it's not your default mode and you get married and you start having kids and they're stressed, you're buying a house, all these things, your default modes are going to kick in. Exactly. The failure to invest and carve out that time and do get the structure and support that you need, you're just going to keep your default modes are going to win. Yeah. And then that leads to people wanting to skip every time. Right. And they just want a magic pill. Yeah. Um, they just want to circumvent all of that. Yeah. But we know that that doesn't work, and that's why people end up in our program. Sometimes it might even be too late, and that's going to be the topic of another live stream. We'll talk about that later. But um, that's one of the things that we see so often as a symptom of this, you know, that they, they've they waited for things to get unbearable instead of getting proactive at the first sign of trouble and recognizing, you know what, this is a pattern. Yeah. I'm going to keep going around and around on this for 20 more years until one of us is just done. Yeah. Or are we going to like nip it in the bud now? Yeah. And that takes a lot of proactivity. Yeah. It, it requires stepping out of your comfort zone. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, it, it takes a lot of introspection, you know, and a lot of people don't like to see that mirror, you know, no. it's hard. and then don't you find that when people get to the point where they're really in crisis, then they might invest finally, but they don't invest wisely. Like they'll, they'll go to a, like a couple's counselor 
that will maybe jump right to communication before doing the inner work or they'll do a session here and then a month later they'll do another session because they don't have childcare. They have to require, how are they going to get there? Yeah. Both of them at the same time driving through rush hour in the evening and trying to coordinate all of that. So they might end up doing a la carte counseling here and there, which is like fee for service. So you, you're this idea that you're paying for the person's time. Yeah. which is not how we should be thinking about investing in our marriage. We shouldn't be thinking about what are you really going to get from one hour? That's not what you should be thinking about. It's yeah. you, it's you of the hour. It's really about outcomes. It's about transformation. It's about the end result. That's what, what you're investing in. It's not a session here and there because that's dabbling. And we've talked about right. that too. Yeah. But then what happens is, is people, they invest maybe not in the best way. It's not, it's just because they don't know. It's, you know, their intentions are good. And then they get hopeless and they're like, Ugh, forget it. I guess it can't work. And then the marriage falls apart because they feel like, well, I've tried. Yeah. I've tried everything. Yeah. And now it just won't work. When we can clearly see, oh my gosh, no, you haven't tried everything. But, and now you're so tired. And what a shame that you didn't start earlier with. Yeah. Yeah, but just to stack on that, uh, Monica, the, 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 I think the bigger thing, not, not making what you're saying small, but one of the bigger things um, in that, people need to recognize is where they are in the relationship. You know, you're in crisis. You, you know, this is, this is, right. the, exactly. this, is not a cut. this is, you have a laceration this, and it doesn't require a bandaid. It requires surgery mm -hmm. and surgery takes time. And so, a a lot of of care. yeah, exactly. So a lot of these approaches that people begin to, you know, like you said, they want to circumvent. So uh, what's the quick way I can kind of resolve this mm -hmm. and, or the most inexpensive way that I can resolve this. And I'm just like, we're talking about your relationship first and foremost. Mm -hmm. So it should be a priority and the investment to save your marriage should not, you know, yeah. the cost of it should be the last thing you're actually thinking about. Right. On that, you should be, you really have to recognize where you are in your relationship and recognize what you truly need to get yourself through this process, you know, and really start doing the research on that and come to grips with what it's going to take for you to get on the other side of this. You know, it's really important. And Monica, you had mentioned the end result, you know, uh, emotional connection and, and, and being able to do that, um, you know, it requires you to be able to act um, in the moment as if you are in the end result, because this is about learning the skills to change your energetic frequency, to change your habits, to change um, the skill set and the mindset from which you come. So, so it, it requires some major um, overhaul in, in the programming and, and the process in which we communicate with one another, what we've been taught, how we've been taught to communicate with one another and really learning how to be in the end result, being in the frequency of having the marriage and relationship that we want. And if you, that requires skills, it requires a skill set. And a lot of mindset work. Yeah. Exactly. And the fabulous awesome. thing is, this is what we teach in the program. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What we yeah. talk about. This and the fabulous what... thing is, these things can be learned. This is a skill set that can yeah. be learned. Well, it's a skill set that can be learned. <clears throat> and even when you learn it, there's still a certain amount of mindset work that has to go into using it when you need to use it. Because as soon as somebody gets triggered, as we know, yeah. those skills will go right out the window because you can't even remember what you learned. So it's right. about re reprogramming at the subconscious level as well. Yeah. So that's why the depth of the work is so important if you want truly yes. to change. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So the solution, you know, really is a more immersive approach. So our advice to you guys today is if you're thinking, okay, I do want to get help for our marriage. I want to invest in it. I want to carve out some time. I want to get structured and systematic about saying we've got to do something different instead of just waiting for the next fight or waiting until, you know, we completely, what's the word, De uh, like just self <laughs> implode or whatever, yeah. you know, Blow tell things fall apart. You have to make a decision to put your marriage first, right? You have to make a decision to put that first above material objects. Above, above everything else. Above everything, everything else. else. <laughs> yeah. What does that mean? That means not spending more time in the drama. 
Yeah. That means deciding to do things differently at right now, from now on. Yeah. That means you decide that it's the priority and you're willing to do some inner work and some the deep work that's involved, not just like, oh, we have to figure this out or yes, let's read this book sometime or let's find some time and go on a date, you know, but really say no more, no more. Are we going to do anything the same way? It really, we really need to prioritize this yeah. and take it by, by the horns instead of just being a victim to our relationship dynamics. Yeah. Right. The second thing is, is you want to take the time to research and explore good support options. Now we found, I am biased. I believe when, if you're in crisis or you've been doing the same show over and over again, immersive support is the way to go. Not the weekly counseling model where you don't get any support between the sessions. That's not going to work if you're in crisis. And we know this, the research has shown this. Yeah. Look into high support skills-based programs. Um, one thing you can do if you are resonating with us and our team and you want to explore support with us, we are an option. You can book a call with us if you're at that point where you feel like I'm ready to really explore truly investing and prioritizing and making making this my plan for 2019 Yeah. and saying, I'm not going to let another year go by looking like last year. Yeah. Now, if you're at that point, we do welcome you to book a call with us. We specialize in immersive radical inside out relationship change. We help people every day in the couple's cure. And um, if you're curious about that, we can hop on a call and we can find out more about you, what your exact problems are, your dynamics, what the barriers are. And then we can find, we'll tell you the truth if we can help you or not. Yep. And if we can't help you, if we're not the best fit, we'll give you the resources to get to the right person. Um, but we just want to help you get some clarity on that and at least try to be a part in this journey <clears throat> that's really our life's work right now is to help people get the clarity, stop the old patterns, transcend the conditioning of your past, and actually consciously create the relationship that you deeply desire because yeah. you, can. Yeah. you really can. It's just a matter of first deciding. Yeah. And once you decide, then the rest follows and you find right. a way. You always find a way to make always. something happen if we want it. It's bad right. enough. Yeah. Yeah. And if you're not going to do it for yourself, do it for your kids. Do it for your kids. Yes, that's a good point because it's really about the legacy that you're leaving. Yeah. yeah. Generationally. Yeah. Yeah. So if you guys are interested or, or, or committed, I should say, not just interested, but really committed to exploring true change in your relationship, I'm going to put a link below where you can book a call with us. You'll talk to one of us and um, we can take it from there. Otherwise, if you just have any questions about the content that we brought up today or you want to engage the conversation further, please do comment. We will reply even beyond the time that this is a live, live stream right now. But if you're listening to this later on, even if we're not here now, we will be checking comments later. Right, yeah. you guys? Right. Sure will. Absolutely. Cool. Anything you guys want to add before we sign off for today? Other than uh, well, we love you. Yeah, and I just want to say, you know, also that the, the – the, the biggest thing, if you don't take away anything, is that you can change the situation that you're in. Okay. Yes. You can change it, you know, and I want people to, that's the biggest thing. If you don't take away anything, you can change your circumstance and you can change what your relationship looks like. You just have to you want. don't know how yet. You want to have to do it enough. That's all. Yeah. 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 Totally. Amen. Well, thanks, Ned. Thanks, Kelly. Until Thank next you. week, we'll be here next Thursday again talking about another relationship topic. Um, until next time, you guys have a wonderful rest of the day. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.